Good morning, Connections. Coming to you from what should be a very familiar place to many, and that's the Woodside Heights Chapel. Now that we've moved into 1900 South Monroe officially, it's time to let go of the Woodside Heights Chapel. God is a God of symmetry. We learned that as we moved towards the birth of Jesus, and we specified when we read the Gospel of Matthew, of God has a design. God has, God, that's what makes God such a beautiful writer of our lives is there's a symmetry to everything. And we mentioned sometimes it's very difficult for us to see that symmetry, to see that, that perfect design because we're too close or we haven't experienced enough time in order for the pattern to reveal itself. Well, in kind of reviewing and visiting for a little bit here as we prepare to, to turn the keys back over to Pastor Larry and the West Florida Network. I pulled up some pictures of when we first moved in and what a blessing this building was to us. At the time, we were uh, borrowing space from the Boys and Girls Club who were very gracious to us and gave us their dance room on Sunday mornings and gave us office space as well. But it also meant that we had to pack up everything and we cooked our meals outside on the sidewalk. Uh, we were very much a church in the box. So when we had the opportunity to move into Woodside Heights Chapel and had an indoor kitchen and a permanent sanctuary, wow, what an amazing blessing. We did, we made that transition. So we began uh, Connections in June of 2000. Well, we began <laughs> the soft open in June 2011. We began, uh, had our first service for everyone on September 18th, 2011. And we moved into the Woodside Heights Chapel in March 2013. So I knew that we had been home here at the Woodside Heights Chapel for quite some time, but it, it only hit me today that we were home at the Woodside Heights Chapel for nearly 10 years. 10 years of making the best of this beautiful old church building that didn't have heat and in the end didn't have air conditioning. But nevertheless, gave us a home, a kitchen to operate out of. We served and, and partnered with other, our other sister churches to provide Thanksgiving dinner and Christmas dinner and Easter dinner each and every year. This is the home of the Bible Bowl that we threw each February. This is the home of our clothing giveaways. This is where um, very early on we, we partnered with Heritage, Heritage Assembly of God to, to spruce up the place and install new double ovens. This has been the home of seeing many changes here in the neighborhood, uh, new paved roads and city sewer. This has been the home of our, our bus fleet and many that have, have uh, come and gone over the years. So it's only right that I take a few minutes since we borrowed some time on Sunday to reflect of how far God has taken us in the process of moving towards uh, 1900 South Monroe that we enjoy a little bit of time here on Amy Street before we turn the keys back in. God is a God of, of planning. He has purpose in everything that he does and there is a symmetry. And it re only reveals itself when enough time has passed that we can see that, that hand of his moving. We're turning our attention today to Genesis 2, verse 5, kind of stepping back from where we were yesterday for this passage. It says, Neither wild plants nor grains were growing on the earth, for the Lord God had not yet sent rain to water the earth. And there were no people to cultivate the soil. Instead, springs came up 
from the ground and watered all the land. The purpose of all creation is for God's pleasure, and he created all creation for man. That's not to say that he needs man in order to be happy. It does not say that it needs man in order to take care of all of creation. If anything, this passage and the passage that follows after the creation of man speaks to that God is more than capable of taking care of his creation, his work. But he invites us in, just as he invites us in today to be part of his work, to be part of reaching the lost. God could accomplish anything that he needs to accomplish without our assistance, but there is something beautiful that he desires to, to offer us and commune with us and offering us a place at the table, a, an opportunity first and foremost in the Garden of Eden to tend to everything that he has created. What a privilege. And now today, the same privilege to tend to what he has created, to tend to the flock that is his and prayerfully bring all those that he loves home. So the purpose of all that he created was that he could move the plan forward and place man in the middle of it. Genesis 2, we're moving forward now again. So man has now, he has breathed into the nostrils of man. He has filled the vessel with his spirit. And now we have this in 8. Then the Lord God planted a garden in, in Eden in the east, and there he placed the man he had made. The Lord, God, the Lord God made all sorts of trees grow up from the ground, trees that were beautiful and that produced delicious fruit. So he had a plan and that plan was to create this wonderful environment for us. It's interesting when we look at this environment that God created for us and how different, if we were, were given unlimited resource to make an environment comfortable for ourselves, it would may even look very different from the environment that God created for Adam and Eve. Nature and, and all of God's creation was purposed to live communing with one another, side by side with one another. There was no structures. There was no cathedrals. There was no 5,000 square foot homes or Rolls Royces or any of the trappings that we consider a luxury item and and the, the, the goal of, of everyone on earth is to, to have palatious homes. Adam and Eve were sheltered by the sky. Adam and Eve rested in the garden. How far have we truly ventured away from what God intended. Before we fill our lives with, with stuff and believe that we have to have giant edifices in order to, to truly be men and women of achievement, perhaps it's time to get back to something simpler. The final thing that this illustration of God being capable of not only creating all that we, we witness, but tending to it, comes to us from Amos, of all places. Amos, a prophet, also a farmer, was utilized by God to, to speak to the to the Israelites that were falling away. 
And God reminded them that he was in control and that he controlled not just, we spoke of it yesterday, not just spinning creation into motion, but every facet of creation. There is nothing beyond God. Amos 4, 7, God says this, I kept the rain from falling when your crops needed it the most. I sent rain on the town, but withheld it from another. Rain fell on one field while another field withered away. God does not need us. We need God. God is capable of controlling every drop of rain. We need to recognize his power and recognize the grace that he has extended us and recognize what a privilege it is to be included in his work. Once we have discovered that, then we truly can begin enjoying abiding in him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for a building that provided shelter and, and a space to, to come together and worship you and tend to one another and, and minister side by side. We thank you, Lord, for the history and all who have traveled through this building. From connections on back through its history long before connections was here. We thank you, Lord, that, that you have provided shelter and a place for us to worship, that you have provided for every aspect of our lives. We choose today, Lord, to, to take our attention away from how we believe we should structure our environment and look back to your kingdom. Look back to how you created the garden, how you tended to every need and invited Adam and Eve to participate in your work. We thank you, Lord, for the same invitation you have offered us. We ask for your forgiveness when we are too hesitant. We pray, Lord, today that you will help us move forward. For your glory and honor, in Jesus' name, amen. Glad you're here. Know that I love you and I miss you. And until we see each other again, please be good. <laughs>